Welcome back to Simply Women's Health with CJ. In recognition of Birth Defect Awareness Month, today I want to talk about different ways that you can decrease your risk for having a baby with a birth defect. The best way to decrease your risk for having a baby with any kind of a congenital abnormality or congenital malformation is actually to start preparing for pregnancy before you become pregnant. I usually counsel my patients if they are thinking about becoming pregnant to start taking a prenatal vitamin, ideally at least a month before you conceive. The prenatal vitamin should contain anywhere from 400 to 800 micrograms of folic acid. Now, a lot of the women's one-a-day over-the-counter vitamins also contain folic acid. So if you're taking a daily vitamin, just check the label and see how much folic acid it has in it. If you are using drugs, illicit drugs or alcohol, obviously we want you to stop that behavior before you become pregnant. Women who use alcohol and drugs during pregnancy increase their risk for having babies with um, bad placentas and those babies don't grow properly. They increase their risk to have miscarriages and even stillbirth. If you are a smoker, and this does include vaping, anything that contains nicotine does increase your risk for having a baby with a cleft palate. If you are using any kind of uh, marijuana, whether it's smoking marijuana or medical marijuana use, those two are considered uh, off limits during pregnancy. Uh, we do know that women who use marijuana in pregnancy, those children have a much higher risk for behavioral problems. They can be smaller than normal at birth and they have an increased risk for stillbirth as well. So if you are, if you are using marijuana, we, we recommend that you stop that prior to conception as well. If you are overweight or obese, studies show that women who start out their pregnancy obese increase their risk for having babies with cardiac defects. They have more neural tube defects or spina bifida. They can also have an increased risk for cleft liver palate. So we recommend that if you are obese or overweight, that you get your try to get down to a normal weight before you conceive your pregnancy. Not a bad idea if you have long-term health issues to schedule a preconception visit with your obstetrician. If you are a diabetic, uh, uncontrolled diabetes in pregnancy can be devastating to both the mom and the baby. So you do want to get your diabetes under control. Same with, yeah, with hypertension. If you have high blood pressure, that too can be very harmful for you or your baby. If you have a seizure disorder such as epilepsy, many of the drugs that you take for epilepsy can also lead to cleft lips and palates. So we recommend that you meet with your provider. Talk about seeing if you can get switched to some pregnancy-friendly medications. If you are taking Accutane for acne, that is well known to cause birth defects and we highly recommend that you not get pregnant while you are taking Accutane. If you are on um, any other kind of medications such as warfarin or lithium, again, see if your doctor can switch you to some kind of a pregnancy friendly medication. Not a bad idea to have your, to check your vaccination status. See if you are immune to rubella. Rubella is also known as German measles, and if you get rubella during your pregnancy, it can absolutely lead to birth defects. If you have um, a family history of any kind of genetic abnormalities, you might want to see if you can meet with a genetics counselor, find out what your risks are for having a baby with a genetic abnormality, and see what testing options are available for you prior to becoming pregnant. Once you're pregnant, you can certainly talk to your provider about different genetic testing options. There are some that are screening tests, that's just blood tests to see if you are at increased risk for having a baby with a number of genetic abnormalities. Some testing offers a cell-free DNA evaluation, which is a pretty highly accurate testing. Remember, these are just screening tests. They're not diagnostic. If you are at high risk for having a baby with a genetic abnormality, there are some diagnostic studies that include um, like an amniocentesis where they get amniotic fluid out and evaluate it for chromosomes. Uh, there's also chorionic device sampling where they can go in very early in pregnancy and check little bits of the placenta. 
a level two or a high risk uh, ultrasound that's typically done between 18 and 22 weeks is a good way to take a good look at your baby. They can also do what's called um, a fetal echocardiogram if you are at increased risk of having a baby with a cardiac defect. We usually recommend that you consider that. Once your baby is here, there are some blood tests that your pediatrician will probably do that can check for uh, approximately 28 different abnormalities that can include genetic, it can include metabolic and hormone uh, problems. They will probably want to do a hearing test on your baby before you go home from the hospital. Some genetic abnormalities or some uh, birth defects aren't discovered until later in life. So that's where you and your pediatrician will work hand in hand and you will uh, monitor your baby for meeting certain milestones. And if there's concerns, your pediatrician can certainly address those. So here's the thing about birth defects. Using the term birth defect is medically accurate. It is used in the medical community. That being said, a baby born with a birth defect is not a defective baby. In my opinion, every single baby born is uniquely perfect in their own way. Hi, if you're still here, thanks so much for sticking around through the entire video. If you feel as though this information has been helpful to you, or you think you know somebody that might benefit from the uh, information provided in these videos, Please feel free to like it, share it, uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you did that. Any and all support that you can provide is so greatly appreciated. As always, these videos were not created uh, as, a, as a replacement visit with your healthcare provider, rather as a place for you to come for basic, reliable information that is non-biased and hopefully allow you to figure out what questions to ask your healthcare provider at your next visit to best meet your healthcare needs. Again, I appreciate all of your support. If you want to contact me, my information is at the top of this screen, and I will put it in the comment section of this video. That's all I have for today. This is CJ. I'm at your cervix.